Arleon, the island nation comprised of a loose alliance between the humans and the Fae, and the faction representing knights in shining armor. In this faction video, I want to help you out in discussing the many aspects of each of the factions within the game. We'll start out by going over a general faction overview, units, wielders, and then close the video out by talking about spells and skills, as well as building priority. Just to reiterate, Songs of Conquest is very much about playing the game that you want, not trying to maximize every single little move. There are a lot of different ways to approach the game, going wider with a larger army or perhaps taller with a more elite army. So while this guide is meant to give you a sense of a better understanding of Arleon, I truly encourage you to find a playstyle that really fits with what you look for in a game. Min-maxing the game isn't going to net you that much more of a benefit compared to immersing yourself in a style that is all your own. With that, you can navigate to each of these sections outlined above using the chapters in both the timeline and the description. And if you end up enjoying the video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be covering tons of Songs of Conquest with guides, streams, and other fun videos in the future. Let's get started here though on our faction guide for Arleon. So to give a general faction overview of Arleon, we're going to talk about how a lot of the elements of Arleon are linked to the defensive nature of some of their units. You get two different units that can add defense to your characters between uh, some Fey units and your uh, your guys with your shields. And also you get a troubadour or a, a minstrel, a bard, whatever he is, that can actually buff up everyone's defense across the board. So right from the start, with just those three notions, you can already see that there's going to be a lot of defensive nature of Arleon. And that's okay, because they have a lot of range to take advantage of. Their top tier unit is a range. Their very first unit is a range. They have a, uh, a mid-tier unit range as well. So getting access to so much range and being a defensive faction makes a lot of sense and i think that arleon is a really good faction for people just starting off but i also think that it is a faction with a very high skill ceiling it has the capability to pour out a ton of damage and being able to bait people into certain specific traps using the overlapping defensive buffs from your army as well as some of the offensive buffs that you'll get from your knights the uh, i think they're called fist of holy order or whatever it is your souped up knights are really badass in addition to that when it comes to casting spells Arleon actually has a really good propensity to jump into either chaos or order casting because their units can just pour out essence of those uh, respective spell lines and I really feel like playing through the game with Arleon I think I've had the most fun and I've hit a, the hardest power spike compared to the other three factions because I think it's the most direct and straightforward of the three factions because it's there's no bells and whistles you know you're going straight forward you're you're doing you're either holding the line or charging forward and your units have the defense to charge forward and take some hits and I, I find that to be really I guess a lot easier when you compare things to Barrio, which doesn't have a lot of defense, and you do kind of have to use the uh, unit abilities, or Loth, which has really a lot of melee and not a ton of range, or Rana, which needs to use a lot of overlapping synergies from each unit. So you'll find here that going through your playthrough of Arleon, you're going to have a very defensive faction that has a lot of range tools and also a lot of really great support casting you do have some very minimal offensive casting across the three essences that you can charge which you'll find what you'll be able to increase movement increase initiative um, increase defense decrease the enemy's ranged capabilities or even just do outright shock damage to them using chain lightning so let's go through the units now and discuss how a lot of this stuff can come together so when it comes to the units, you have a lot of very fun variety and again this is uh, I my personal favorite faction in all of Heroes of Might and Magic was the Knight faction, right? Uh, Haven. I always enjoyed them the most, so Arleon really just rings true to me. The Necropolis was a very close second, and that's why Loth is my probably my second favorite faction. But either way, um, when you look at this faction spread, you're going to see some interesting things. And taking a look at these first four units, just kind of keep in mind, your first two units that you truly get access to are Militia, and minstrels it's you don't get access to rangers they're they're locked into a medium building the barracks that includes the footmen so just to kind of keep things on a bit of a cohesive notion just so that you know that so starting off here with the militia we get our very first range unit now they do have a max troop size of 50 which is pretty nice and their damage is one to three their range is okay at five with a deadly range of three the problem with them is that they are using a crossbow meaning that they have a reload so, troop can perform one range attack that needs to reload for a turn. And you'll find that 
I actually don't like the militia in the long term. I think in the very beginning of your match, they're great, especially used in conjunction with rangers until you can build your rangers. But I honestly feel I'd rather run two units of rangers, and we'll get into that in just a little bit, than militia. And I'll explain that in a little bit. Well, or I guess sappers, which is the upgraded version. So one thing to kind of keep in mind here, and I'll be doing a video that kind of goes into the wielder stats and the unit stats and how they actually kind of play into the game. But when you see damage two to three, you take that and whatever the average number is per unit is how the, uh, the unit does damage. So take, for example, a stack of 50. So if we were to say that the average was just two, then it would do 100 damage across all 50. Then it would look at the melee or your ranged offense and compare that to the enemy's defense to get the amount of damage that they would do. And then there's there's ranged uh, resistance that would then negate some portion of damage. And again, we'll go into that on its own video. So if you're wondering how those stats play into each other, that's how they do it. So as I go through the rest of these units, just kind of keep that kind of stuff in mind. And the sapper here, the upgraded version of the militia, I I don't really I don't really find them that great yeah your your damage goes up from one to three to two to three so you have a better damage interval but your range only goes up by one and your deadly range stays the same your defense your your ranged offense it's not that much of an increase right so i honestly find the sappers to be a little lackluster especially because their ability is stakes it's not that great to me in, in my personal opinion i'd rather just have more rangers that i find to have a lot more utility so let's move into them the ranger is your next unit that is range and again you would get these guys in a medium barracks so you wouldn't have them until around two tier two tier three depending on how you build your medium buildings but they do two to three damage which is the same as your sappers and they don't have any abilities to start off they've got a good range though at seven and a deadly range of four great offense though at 11 as well now into the archers we get some real spicy stuff so these guys have two to three well these have three to four so a very small damage interval of either one either three or four and the ranged offense is 17 with a range of eight and a deadly range of five and here's how that deadly range is going to be really beautiful for you you get the ability to ambush with these guys so attack the first enemy moving into your deadly range remember deadly range doubles your damage so if someone moves into your deadly range they take double damage and then you get to do your turn. So the way that this plays out is your archers come up, you press the ambush button, if they, and they don't shoot anyone until someone comes in their deadly range un, uh, up until their next turn. Now, you do have to kind of be clever with this. You can't just press the button and assume it's going to give you a, a, basically a free shot in a turn, um, and you're going to get the double damage for it. You pretty much have to make sure that you're looking at the enemy's movement and see that they're actually going to move into your deadly range. Otherwise, just take your normal shot. But the ambush ability is a really great way to get a lot of damage out. And what I like here, too, is that this is an archer. It's not a crossbow unit, so I can shoot with them every turn. Your stack is limited to 20, which is less than half of the sapper stack, but I can have two units of archers and get out more damage at a reliable rate and use the ability ambush if I need to, to really, really bring these guys home at a better range and a better deadly range. I just, I find that using sappers and militia up until the mid game is viable. Until that point though, I'm gonna swap out for two units of archers because they're just so much more effective in my opinion. Next up though is the minstrel which is our musician unit. Now, this is the first actual combat unit you get alongside the militia. And don't sleep on them as far as an actual combatant. They're great. 12 melee offense is a pretty solid little initial unit here. They do have a smaller defense at 6, though, with they, which they can buff with their ability Fear No Foe, plus 5 defense to all friendly units on the map. Keep in mind that this is an ability, right? So, you can move to movement, because he has 3 movement, and then use the ability. So that you you can kind of squeeze it in with your normal movement. Jumping here into our troubadour, the next one up, we get a plus 10 defense to friendly. Stout heart shall stand. And a damage increase, a melee offense increase, and a slight defense increase here. So this is a unit that you will have being a melee combatant in the very beginning of your playthrough, but you'll probably swap out to the other four next melee combatants we're about to talk about, which are just going to wreck house by comparison. Keep in mind too, though, this guy is going to be definitely an, S an essence charger for you. At two creation and one chaos, this guy is going to be giving you a lot of casting capability. 
Now into our footmen, we get the first real rank and file style soldier for the faction, and a very defensive sol soldier at that. He does have shielded, giving him that 50% range resistance, which is really, really nice. You can mitigate a lot of range damage coming your way. They, he's not going to move very fast because he's got a movement of three, which is the same as the troubadour anyway. And he still does a good amount of damage too, two to five with just a 10 melee defense, but 16 defense. Remember that defense is going to be compared against the melee offense or ranged offense of your attacker and that's going to mitigate the amount of damage he receives and upgrading him to the shield of order increases his damage from four to seven and gives him a substantial increase to his defense right he goes from 16 to 24 yeah 16 to 24 and he goes up to 20 initiative so he'll be moving quite quickly and he gets a cool ability called protect so the way you use this protect pretty effectively is either keep him in the back line and defend your uh, archers by using it Give friendly units within one hexagram or hexagon, hexagon, <laughs> uh, 25 defense. So you can really soup those guys up. And it also gives it to himself. So when you cast this, he's going to jump up to 49 defense, and that's pretty spicy. But the way I like to use this, he, I run him toe to toe with the troubadour. So I'll run both of them two steps use their abilities and this is going to jump him up to a total of 69 <laughs> nice oh i know 59 i can't add shit uh 59 defense and it puts the troubadour up as well right he goes from 19 plus an additional 25 so he's going to be having a lot more defense as he charges downfield alongside the shield of order it's the way i like to really use them in that early game to get a lot of use out of them also, you get three order essence from him. So you're going to charge up your order. Like I said, order is a big casting potential for you. And you're going to get it from the first two units you get. And then a ton from the footman. Moving into our first bigger unit, we get the knight. And honestly, my favorite unit in the game, hands down. Hands down. It is so cool uh, looking when it's at upgrades. And it has really great abilities. So its damage is amazing at 13 to 16. Its health is strong at 30. Melee offense is, is incredible at 26. Defense is lower, but not low. It's 22. That's still really damn solid. And it has a just massive movement of five. So it also gets shielded, so it can take range shots and charge it. Receive for each step, 10 melee offense. So if you get that full five movement, that's 50 additional melee offense. You're going to crush through someone's defense. And then upgrading it to the Fist of Order is just, it's just the creme de la creme. You get everything that I mentioned before, but an even better stat line, right? Comparing 13 to 16 to 20 to 24, and a melee offense of 26 to 37. That's a substantial increase, including uh, Charger. It's very spicy. But you also now get ability strengthened. So give friendly units within one hex 20 melee offense, 20 ranged offense, and then one damage. So this is another instance where I would either keep this character back, buffing my back line, or run it in tow with these characters. Uh, I would actually kind of try to keep it behind them a little bit, just so that I can use the additional movement to get around and attack something, because you want to get as much value out of Charger as possible. And this is what I mean. These first three units, the last three units we've talked about, you can use these buffs to just hang out in the back. Let your enemy come to you. You can be buffing up your ranged attacks with this character. You can be buffing up the defense of any returning attacks with this character. Same thing with this one right here. So you have so many little tools at your disposal with Arleon that I really love. But keep this in mind. It's, this is a very expensive unit. And... It's not just expensive from a monetary standpoint, it's expensive from a resource standpoint. You are going to be sucking down Celestial Ore as the uh, Arleon. And it really kind of depends, too, if you want to focus more on humans or on the Fae, which we're about to talk about. Because the Fae are all about that silk, baby. So let's jump in here to the, uh, the first Fae, the Horned One. Now, the Horned One is another really strong unit. And what's nice is that the Barracks puts the Footman and the Ranger together. Then the Fey Grove, I believe it is, puts the Horned One and the Fey Spirit together. The castle is where the knight is made, and that's on its own. So you kind of have to factor how you want to make your, your uh, buildings out, which we'll talk about in a bit, to determine which groups of units you want to get. And the Horned One is a really solid one if you're comparing it um, as far as like another large unit, right? Because this guy's a large unit compared to the, uh, the knight. Um, 13 to 16 damage compared to the knight, 13 to 16. Health is 40, compared to the Knight's 30. Melee offense is 23, compared to the Knight's 27. And then defense, though, is 12, compared to the Knight's 20. 
Movement is four, and then initiative is 23. Where this really comes in, though, is Berserker. So it's going to tank your unit's defense. You can mitigate this a little bit with the defense spell, but eh. Really, though, you're going to get a movement and a damage increase, and that damage is going to be substantial. You'll be able to just club things to death with the Horned One very quickly. And then this progresses down to the Queen's Guard with a really strong unit that has, again, the ability to defend and add 30 defense. So this mitigates the, dam or the uh, defense reduction that he gets from being Berserk. Also, it can mitigate a lot of that early gameplay of anyone trying to target down and shoot these Queen's Guard apart. You can add that defense on before they berserk, and you're going to be sitting pretty at 53 defense, not to mention anything you get from the Troubadour or the Shield of Order. Like I said, layering these things. And because this guy can move so fast at movement 4, and the Fist of Order moves at movement 5, you can also use Strengthen to buff up this character, uh, the, uh, the Queen's Guard, even more. So... Really, it's about using the synergy between all these units to buff each other, keep that backline steady, and that frontline really, really, really horny. I don't know why I used horny, but I'm sticking with it. Now, into the face spirit here, we have a unit that is very much a glass cannon. 17 melee offense with 8 to 12 damage um, and only 6 health. You really want to protect these things. And in their very first iteration, they're not as great. They, they seem very finicky for a unit that it sits the second to last in its in its uh, uh, progression here but the fey rager is a rager again 10 health it is pretty low and 8 to 12 damage you're thinking this might it's not that great melee offense at 19 but it can wait to propose uh, to postpone your turn to bring someone closer to you right but then it also gets double strike to increase its attacks and when we go through some of the spells you'll see that you can layer these spells onto the fey rager to really really get a lot of benefit out of it even too if you use the fist of order to buff up the melee offense here you're going to be looking at 39 melee offense on these which i believe as far as yeah as, as far as naked stats go from the other units that's the highest melee offense um, across the line so you do get a very heavy hitting unit that will double strike and that will mean it will attack any retaliation will be done and then it will attack again so it its second attack won't be as strong because it might lose some units but still it is a very very nice unit the i'd say the downside to this is the fact that Yes, it does have low health and it's glass cannony, but it's damage interval of 8 to 12. That is a 4 damage interval, and like I said, the way damage works is every single unit in the stack effectively rolls 8 to 12. So if we're looking at a stack of 20, you're going to get 8, 8, 9, 12, 11, 12, 12, 8, 9, 12, 12, 11. Like, it's just going to roll those numbers and then truncate it down, and that's going to be the damage. So... Just kind of keep that in mind, it has a high damage interval, so it has a propensity to be either lower or very high. Moving into then the Fey Noble, we have the top tier unit in the army, and it's a strong unit. It's a very interesting unit because it doesn't kind of operate in a normal way when you, when you come to its upgrade. So for one, it gets inspiring, so everyone that's around it gets five melee offense, ranged offense, and initiative, which is great, but it's, and its melee offense is still pretty strong at 21 with 65 health on these, 13 to 16 damage, 20 defense, but that ranged offense is what we really like, right? 28 with six range and four deadly. Now, they're great on their own, and keep in mind too, they do cost um, uh, silk, but the Fey Queen is crazy. So what you get is a, a much higher damage Fey, of course, but you get this ability called Fey Fire. Fire bolts of energy at random enemy targets. And this is a really great way to whittle down the entire army versus focusing on one and having that option to choose. And at range 7, deadly range 5, you have the ability to either say, you know what? I'm going to pour a ton of damage into one unit and really try to pop it as fast as I can. Or... I can spread this out and do a lot of damage. And what I've done, uh, once I unlock the Fey Queen, what I really do is keep the Fey Queen back with the Fist of Order. I use the Fist of Order to buff her once, and then I wait the next turn. The Fist of Order can probably close the distance towards any unit at that point, and she will get the buff of the additional uh, ranged offense here and be able to just do so much damage in that first turn. And you can use Re Reinvigorate to give her another turn in that turn and we'll go into the spells there in a little bit but the way that looks like you 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 keep the fist of order you use strengthen 
then you hit let the fey queen have her turn and then maybe use fey fire during her turn you'll by then probably have enough uh, essence to use reinvigorate you cast on the fey queen and then target a single target and hit again really hard or do fey fire again and hit everyone again for for a lot of damage um the way i kind of I, i've seen the math work out she shoots i think it's like three to four little fireballs out actually it might be one per per unit because i had six in my stack when i tested this so she shoots out a fireball, and it does a third of her total unit damage. So her total unit damage was something like 150, 160, and she did something like 50, 60 damage per fireball. So um, it, it was it's a really great way to just dish out a ton of damage, and I think that it's probably one of the cooler units to have at that top tier where you get a ton of utility out of. I really, really like how the, all the synergy plays together with Arleon, especially as you look at all these abilities, all these characters, and all their buffs. Moving into research, we get the Grand Armory and the Academy, and it's the same shtick we've seen with every other faction. You either get the ability to improve your units and then give them buffs overall to either the Fey or their human counterpart, or you get economy and wielder buffs to their essence generation, and then unit cap improvements. So the way I would determine which research to go down would be based off of what's on my map. I didn't have the ability to really secure a lot of silk, so it made it really kind of cumbersome for me to want to go into anything that would cost me a lot of silk. Stuff like this, the Glimmer Weave. I just didn't really want to jump into that. But I mean, I had a lot of Celestial Ore, but this is still a steep price for all of these. 10 Celestial Ore to get 10 more defense. It didn't feel as useful as just getting more uh, knights or getting other upgrades because celestial ore is used to upgrade a lot of the the uh, portions of the city in Arleon. So it was hard for me to want to prioritize that. Um, so it, I guess it kind of really comes down to what's on your map. You can use the the caps here, which are a smaller point in our smaller resource investment of only five usually five celestial ore five ancient amber or five glimmer weave which might be a little more accessible to you but again this one unlike a lot of the other factions where i've had a very clear-cut idea of which one i wanted to do i think that you can buff up the units so much in combat either through your spells or their innate abilities that going down improvement trees is not as much of a um is not as much of a necessity as it is for a different faction. So go with whatever one makes the most sense for the resources you have access to on that map, and then kind of make that judgment call of which research to jump into. Next up, let's talk about the wielders. And I'm gonna go into the options menu because it just is nicer to see everything in a list, but these are all of the wielders minus, I think one, I think I'm missing one here of the wielders for Arleon. So let's jump into the codex, go look at wielders here, and we can see all of them. So. Um, Arleon's unique in that I think that almost all of their wielders are quite good because they really apply buffs or bonuses to a lot of the things that make Arleon very great. And Cecilia Stoutheart is a really strong initial character. She gets 5 offense, 10 defense, and if you're confused in how these work, this translates down into the unit. So if I look at this offense, a wielder's offense is passed on and added to its troops' melee offense and ranged offense. Defense, so will incur a bonus to their defense. And you can see this right here. So that uh, that, that is all kind of going to give you a good idea of how much they get to the ranged offense and melee defense of the respective unit. So kind of keep that in mind when you are trying to decide which wielders to go with. So back into Cecilia. And she starts off with some good units, right? Rangers and footmen. It's a good, nice start because you're going to be filling it in with uh, minstrels and militia, and she gets guards. So they get an increase to all of their defense when it comes to range attacks, as you well know. We'll just jump into that really quick. Oh, I'm sorry, that's melee resistance. That's melee resistance. That's not the one for range resistance, but yes, it's a melee resistance buff, which is great. Remember, melee resistance factors after damage is done is determined from offense and defense. It's that final kind of reduction to overall damage. So it's a very nice skill, in my opinion. Um, and I think she's probably one of my favorites. Uh, she's a really good starting uh, uh, wielder. She gets a bonus to order generation, so you're going to have a lot of order spells to take advantage of. Athiel here is another really strong character, but you have to kind of be careful with her because she does start with four, 
four phase spirits, which are, as we talked about, very glass cannony. She does have 10 offense here, and she gets channeling as well as an increase to her spell damage. So this character is going to be pouring out spell damage like no other. Remember, channeling increases spell damage just in that first level, so she'll have a 70% bonus to her spell damage power. That is substantial. So if you want to cast a lot of spells, Ephiel is really, really good at that. And I think she can make a really good starting uh, character. Just, again, be mindful. Face spirits are going to fall apart very quickly in the early game. So just, just again, be mindful of that. I said it like four times already. Uh, Giandra here is another pretty interesting character because she starts with three face spirits, one horned one, and then three more face spirits. But she focuses on chaos magic. So if you want to make that jump into Chaos Magic, you can definitely do that with her. Gna, or Gna, <laughs> Gna, <laughs> what's wrong with me? Gna, High Chief of Fae, is one of my favorite characters in Arleon. Now, he gives 15 offense. He's got 12 movement, just your standard, but he starts with three horned ones, which if used in conjunction with your uh, starting militia and your starting uh, minstrels, quickly jumping into... Um, footmen and archers is a really really strong uh first line army and also his skill is melee which gives a bonus to the damage of your melee offense and at the top end gives you 10 percent melee resistance it's a really really great ability that that synergizes really well with this 20 melee offense to fade troops and 20 ranged offense to fade troops he doesn't come into his own until the latter portions of the game and uh, or the latter portions of your specific game. Um, and he might not be the best starting character or starting wielder for you. I just really like him because those buffs really, really magnify the, the berserk potential of horned ones. They magnify the damage of your fey spirits. And oh man, your fey queens just do so much more damage with that 20 range buff on it. It's basically like having the uh, Fist of Orders doing a free buff to all fey units. Lady Hammond here is going to be increasing um, the defense to human troops. So why, while Na gives that melee offense and range offense to Fey, she gives the uh, defense to human troops. So you can just really stack up the defensive capabilities of your uh, units in Arleon. And she also starts with Cunning. Remember, that's going to give you that 10 melee and ranged offense as well as 10 defense. So a lot of that is just going to work so well together with her. Um, that's 30 range. That's 30 defense for human troops for the first two turns of combat before dropping down to 20, which is nice. In just the initial portion of the game. Paradine is going to give you March, which is going to help you move more. He already starts with 13 movement. 5 and 5 on the offense and defense, and then plus 1 to creation with 10 rangers. I personally don't find Paradine to be a very good starting wielder. I think he's one I would want to put in at maybe my third or fourth wielder just to go pick up things for me. I don't really see that huge of a use for him outside of that. Ravenfair here, uh, Ravenfire, Ravenfair, uh, Raven, Raven is also one of my favorite characters. Um... What I like here is the buff to archery, the buff to ranged offense, the start with rangers, the offense of 10, the movement of 13. There are so many really great um, starting buffs right there locked into you because, like I've said, you're going to have so many ranged units. 15 ranged offense as a blanket bonus on top of your 10 offense is going to further increase your ranged offense. Then archery is going to further increase your ranged offense and then at max level increases range. I think that he is probably, he or she is one of the best characters for Arleon because you're going to just get so much synergy in the beginning game when you're using militia and you're using rangers and then you're going to get a lot of synergy in the late game when you have maybe two stacks of archers and a fey queen. I, I really love this character. Silverlink here brings five offense, ten defense, and then you're going to get a smattering of militia, rangers, and minstrels, which is a really nice little starting army, and then taxes as well as plus one troop movement, which is very nice actually. That plus one troop movement means your minstrels can now move three and activate their ability rather than moving two and then activating their ability or just move a full four if they want to so this is a really nice one as well and then vilja of thorncliff gets you 40 percent uh, spell damage resistance which is very nice the skill prepared this one is the one that's going to give you the initiative bonus which is very nice as well i don't find it to be as huge as maybe a defensive buff um, but also you can see a 13 movement with five offense, five defense. So like I said, a lot of the wielders for Arleon are really, really good. 
I think Raven is my easily my my top pick. I think it's a really good starting one because you're going to be dealing with militia and rangers in the beginning. And the nice thing is the, that you get those rangers immediately and then you just recruit militia and boom, you've got two range units that you can stack these bonuses on top of. I love it. Um, Cecilia, I think, is another really strong starting character as well. And then I really like somehow moving into Gnaw for buffing up my top end or maybe using Ethel if I want to... Ethyl? 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 Uh, ethyl? Methanol? Uh, if I want to go heavy into casting. Spells for Arleon are going to focus primarily on order as well as chaos with that kind of tertiary fault focus into crea uh, creation. Yes. Now, this will depend upon if you want to focus more into Fey or into humans, because that will kind of determine what your overall order or chaos uh, primary would be. Uh, this is every single one of the units of Arleon minus the militia, but they generate the same essence as the archers. So you can see that that's going to be six order, seven chaos, and then five creation. And what that looks like here are a lot of good movement and, and, and damage capabilities at the, the bottom end here. But movement mainly with quicken, defensive with protection. Um, you can also mitigate damage with pacify, but rally is going to be a very strong bonus here because it's going to give you defense, mainly offense and ranged offense, which is really lovely. And if you upgrade your casting, remember you can cast these things multiple times on multiple targets. It's a really nice buff uh, to all of your casting capabilities to upgrade the tier of the things that you use the most. Moving here into chaos step, which is a nice little uh, kind of movement one here boiling blood not so great on tier one can be really good on higher levels and with spell damage increase tempest is interesting because all troops get minus 25 percent ranged offense all troops not enemy so i don't like that one at all <laughs> but chain lightning will do 35 damage to a target troop jumps to an additional troop within two hexagons two times and deals 35 damage this includes friendly so be careful if you're using this uh, because it will hurt your own units. It can be used probably a little bit better um, on any backline enemies that you're dealing with. Then creation, get earth block, which uh, as someone mentioned in one of the comments, uh, you can get pretty cheesy with it by increasing your tiers and you casting this multiple times, of course. Uh, insect swarm for more damage, initiative reduction, mist to actually make it so your troops cannot be attacked until they attack. And then acid cloud is always a great one. But I really like a lot of the combined spells. Uh, Fury is great here to kind of stack up some of the abilities of the Queen's Guard. And then Swap will just swap two units, which can be pretty fun. But Clouded Vision is really nice. And the way I use Clouded Vision is to pull any of the enemies ranged into me. If you're against the AI, they're going to move towards you. Against a human, that's probably not going to be the case. But I really like this as a way to just push things closer to the meat grinder that is your army. Also, Invigorate is an amazing ability. All friendly troops get 10 initiative and one troop movement. It's a great way to shore up a, the like kind of mid-ground movement that Arleon has for all of its like beginning of the uh, uh, line units. So it's a really great way to move around the map. Also, Onslaught gives an additional attack, so this can be really, really, really strong on Queen's Guards, or especially on the Fey Ragers, giving them three total attacks or Fist of Order. It's a great way to really kind of get that extra damage out. And then lastly, Rejuvenation, not Reinvigorate, sorry, Rejuvenation is the ability I was talking about. Target-friendly troop who has already made their turn gets another turn. Recap, you cast either Fey Fire or do direct damage to their Fey Queens, then cast this on the Fey Queen, and then do the same thing again. It's such a great way to pour out a ton of damage with Arleon, and I absolutely love it. With skills, I think Archery is one of the best skills for Arleon because you get three units that are using range capabilities. They're going to be mainstays for you from the beginning all the way to the end of your game, and I think it's a really, really strong uh, uh, skill. It's why I think uh, Raven's one of my favorite wielders here as well. Now, Command, also you always want to be focusing on that. Combat training is good too to increase the damage, just damage, which is great, of your units. Um, I really like this one here because you can get so much out of it. I do not like cunning very much because I find with Arleon, my my round, my combat lasts definitely more than three rounds. Um, it's great to have the buff, but I wouldn't prioritize it over, say, again, archery or um, combat training. Again, maybe even guard if I wanted to increase the melee, de uh, melee resistance of my units or melee to increase the melee offense of my units. I, I find I get more more use out of that. Um, where's the other one I wanted to find? Uh, oh, yes. 
Also, I find find meteors to be a very, very good ability here because then you can basically uh, get a wash for the cost of your knights, right? When you get those upgraded knights, the uh, Fists of Order. Yeah, the Fists of Order. You are going to be using a lot of those uh, Celestial Ores, so you might as well use that here. Um, definitely, too, as well, jump into the Glimmer Weave one if you want to help out with any of your Silk production. Kind of called something of the Spiders. Yeah, crafty spiders. Yeah, uh, glimmer weave so that you can get more fey. What you're going to notice, like I said, though, is that you're going to be using a ton of celestial ore and a ton of glimmer weave just to upgrade your buildings. So you need those a lot. And I definitely would make sure you have a good eye for amber. <laughs> I didn't mean to say it like that, but you do want eye for an amber because you will require it will require you. I think it's 25 or 15 uh, ancient Amber to upgrade your Fey Court and 30 some odd Glimmer Weave. So you definitely need Ancient Amber too. You don't, you don't need, you need all three rare resources for all factions, but some will always focus on one more resource more than the other two. And for uh, Arleon, it is definitely Celestial Ore followed by Glimmer Weave, followed by Ancient Amber in that order. So definitely think about those uh, economy skills for some of your wielders as well. Now, when it comes to your powers, uh, if you want to go heavy into casting, always go with Attuned, but I really like Farsight here. Increase that range, increase that deadly range. Like I've said so many times, you're going to be doing a ton of range damage. You might as well take advantage of it with Farsight. Um, as well, too, you can do something like Brutal to help increase some of that damage as well. I don't uh, ooh, not wrong one, wrong one. Eager, I don't like as much because a lot of the times I spend the first round hanging back, so I don't find as much benefit out of the troop movement here. And rigor can really help out, help out uh, increasing that defensive characteristic of your army with Arleon. Our last section is about building tiers, so let's talk about tier one. Now, this is going to come down to what you started with, but I typically like to jump into either the peasant hut or the tavern, uh, give me some either some minstrels for some close combat capabilities, or the peasant hut to kind of further increase that militia. And then from there, you kind of need to be a little more forward thinking, I think, with Arleon. Because with your barracks, you need the uh, lumber mill. With the fey grove, you need a farm. And then with the castle, you need a peasant hut and a quarry. So you need eventually all the, the uh, small buildings. So I would decide kind of, I guess, early on what you want to build. I personally like the barracks. I think it's a really solid, uh, good upgrade because it gives me good defensive units as a, as a front line and a really nice uh, ranger. As you guys know, I love them so much. So I go with a lumber mill for my next uh, production, my next small block in tier one. Moving into tier two, we get our first medium slot, which I'm definitely going to go with the barracks here. Want to make sure I do have that requirement for the upgrade, which is Lumber Mill, which we built in our previous one. And we have here, too, our Peasant Hut for our Militia. So this small building is probably going to be the other small building unit production I did not go with, which would be the Tavern. Also, too, I want to think about the next medium building I want to build. Personally, I would probably go with a Castle. Uh, and that's just because I like the Knight so much. So that would be a Quarry. Meaning I would want to go then with the quarry, or I'm sorry, the uh, uh, the tavern, and then the quarry for the other two small slots in tier two for me, because that's how I want to get. And also, uh, focusing on a quarry early is a good call, because you're going to need so much stone to upgrade and to build walls and to make more buildings. So a stone quarry is, is a really good jump either way. All right, tier three is where things get romantic because we now have our first large build slot. So this you can decide. Do you want to go with that fake court? Do you want to immediately start pumping out the nobles? Which is going to be really good. But keep in mind, you do need to have a really strong glimmer weave supply to even get them out. And a lot of glimmer weave and ancient amber to upgrade to tier two. Which you already require a fake grove to build. Or uh, you need a fake grove to get to tier two anyway. And then you're going to need more fey, uh, uh, glimmer weave to even make the fake queen. So just keep... Keep those things in mind. It is a very resource hungry faction and it's why their units are very, very durable and good and strong. But the Grand Armory here or the Academy, I really would more so than taking a look at the available research, like I've said before, look at what you have around you. Do you have the Glimmer Weave and Ancient Amber to make the Academy or do you have the uh, Ancient Amber and Celestial Ore to make the Armory? And then decide from there which resource you're going to be able to stockpile enough of to take advantage of the researches within that research tree so it is so much 
so much more dependent on resources than I think the other factions in so many different ways. Then for a medium slot, definitely going to go with the Fey Grove or the Castle, depending upon if I wanted to go with that Fey Noble immediately, I'd want that Fey Grove for my second medium slot. Otherwise, for me personally, you guys know how much I love the Castle, so I would jump into that. Let's move here now to the next tier. Oh, uh, before we end this tier, though, make sure you do build your walls in this tier so you have a nice good natural choke point and good defensive structures to help out in the event of a siege. So tier four is going to grant us two more small building slots, and then it is going to grant us another medium build site. And this would naturally be filled with the other unit you didn't make or the other building you didn't make. Um, in this playthrough, I didn't have the resources to make the castle So uh, in the previous tier, so I made a Fey Grove. So here is where I would make that castle. And again, I would look at any small buildings, make sure I've got all the ones necessary to, oh, need a farm here. So I would make a farm in this small building slot so that I can make the upgrade for my Fey Grove. Then this other small building slot, I would definitely jump into a guard tower. Remember, guard towers are gonna add garrison size and units to your actual defensive structure, into your actual um, uh, building itself, or to your fortress here. <laughs> so they would fill these two garrison slots and add one ballistae as they get upgraded to the next level. And for every tower you've got you're producing more units and a higher max and then you can just simply draft in some rangers here and you have a very good defensive little structure maybe even i'd probably pop in these guys or maybe even these guys too to give a, a nice really good defensive army i mean that's that's a really solid army with two garrisons and the two ballistae once you build the second tower in the last tier so that's my my preferred route here uh, for this. Uh, again, I like to make the marketplace. I like to make multiple marketplaces in the settlements that I find throughout the map because those marketplaces give you a better uh, sell and buy rate for each one that you own. Um, if you're really struggling with resources, go with the go with the marketplace to then kind of bury in additional Glimmer Weave or Celestial Ore, but I'd rather get a unit producing building than a marketplace here in my actual town center. So here we are at that max level, tier five, where we get our last large build site, which is gonna be the Fey Court. I want those big, big, bad Fey Queens to just destroy a lot of things around me. And then this last small build site, it's gonna be a guard tower. That's just kind of the way I like to approach these things. Um, I know some people would probably break down some of their, their um, resource producing buildings once they've secured more resources across the map. See, I've got two claim buildings that I'm getting resources from that kind of substitutes the same amount of resource I would get from my in town quarry. But if you're going to do that, keep in mind that you might shut off the requirement for something that you haven't upgraded yet. So just be mindful of that before you destroy anything and sell anything that you've built the appropriate upgrades that you want in your town. And maybe you want to focus on maybe a, a double tavern here to get more troubadours, whatever it is. Um, doom stacking can be something that you want to do where you focus on one unit. I like to have a nice variety here, so that's why I have every single slot has got a, a particular purpose in my town. But this should help me give you a really good idea of how to build out your city here for Arleon. And at that, it brings our video here to a close. So I hope now you have a better understanding of how to approach our Leon. And like I said, it is a very straightforward faction with a good high skill ceiling because you have so many ways you can approach these units and these synergies and these buffs and everything like that. And I love it. I, I think our Leon is an extremely strong faction because of it, but I think it takes a little time to A, get off the ground because they're not good in low numbers. And I mean low numbers in the sense that um, having four rangers isn't awesome having 20 rangers is going to be stellar because you can use ambush you can do a lot of damage with them especially in two different stacks and the same can be said for their footmen too not so great on their own but once you buff them up get into the upgrade and get a higher uh, a higher unit stack they can just do so much defensive capabilities and i really really like that about the unit i think it's a, i think it's a really good army and easily one of my favorite ones. So if you have any questions, anything you're struggling with, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. I'm going to be doing a video on the wielder and the unit stats to kind of help break things down and the actual math behind it. Um, the developers gave me all pretty much of the 
of what computation happens when it comes to damage and what percentages, how they all work and stuff like that. So I'll be kind of getting into the nitty gritty in a video like that for those that are interested. And I will be doing a video on the fourth mission of the campaign for Orleon, as I've heard that that is one that people are getting stuck on quite a bit. And uh, we'll go through that together. I'll give you guys a good walkthrough. But if you have any other questions or any other uh, faction you want to go into, I do have the list at the end of the video here that you can take a look at all of the other uh, faction guides that I've made so far. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one and take care.